Ms. Ryucci, uh, based on your investigation, am I correct that you concluded that Mr. Paluta uh, retaliated against Ms. Martin for filing her complaint of gender discrimination and retaliation? Yes. Ms. Martin, during your decade in the Army, did you ever experience anything like you have experienced at the CFPB? No, sir. I've never experienced it anywhere. And I will go further to say that others who have military experience at the Bureau have likewise said it. And I will say that I was a, the only female in an all-male aviation unit for a time when I was in Germany. I have never seen anything like this as a total disregard for our rights. In your capacity as a, a union board member, uh, you're privy to communication between the CFPB and the union, are you not? Some communications, yes. Yes. Uh, did the union request a demographic breakdown of the CFPB's performance reviews? Yes, sir. Okay. Did the union request the demographic breakdown because it believed there were racial disparities in the performance reviews? Yes, sir. Why did the union believe there were disparities? Sir, when the initial grievances came forward, they showed it was filed by minority women and minority males. And so we had reason to believe that there might be something at issue. I will point out, though, that the information request was done three days before they nominated me to be on the board. Okay. Okay. But you were, you were knowledgeable of that request? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, when it received the demographic information, did the, did the union conclude that the CFPB officials discriminated on the base of race? Yes, sir. Based on your personal experience and what you've learned as a, a union board member, is there discrimination against minorities and women at the CFPB? Yes, sir. There appears to be, and I will go further and say when we were very concerned as a board when we saw that our, um, when the report came out and confirmed it, and our president said, holy cow, in two words, and in a speech to the bargaining unit members to try and embolden them and encourage them, he said that this was overt discrimination and the director should apologize. Uh, Ms. Martin, based on everything you've seen, do you believe that women and minority employees at the CFBB are compensated the same as their white male counterparts? No, sir. I know for a fact that they're not. And I also know that the Bureau has been aware of this for quite some time. There's a pay disparity, particularly in the um, Office of Enforcement, where when they went, the Bureau assessed the pays that were set when we entered into service. They found that there was as much as a $60,000 gap for similarly situ situated employees. For example, the same person went to the same law school, studied under the same professor, graduated in the same year, and has tens of thousands of dollars difference. When that study was done, not one male salary needed to be adjusted, only women and minorities. And this is, uh, this is information the union received, and it was pay disclosure. Uh, the the yes, pay was disclosed. Yes. Okay. So based on everything you, you've seen, do you believe that white male managers have engaged in discrimination against women and minorities? Yes, sir. But I will back up. I know also because these um, employees have come to me personally, they, people have come to me many times and many occasions, even more so since I came forward, and they tell me themselves. It has nothing to do with being a member of the union. And why don't they come forward? Sir, they're afraid because they know that I've been retaliated against. And also, quite frankly, I ask them, and they don't want to make themselves subject to a public hearing. Some of them are actively looking for other employment, and they think to do so would inhibit them from getting jobs. And you have had a long and successful career. Uh, what, uh, where were you in terms of the Bureau hiring? I know we've got, uh, there are a lot of employees there now. Where, where were you in the hiring? Sir, I came on board when there were less than 30 members in the Office of Enforcement. Director Cordier ran the office at that time. He interviewed me and he hired me. Okay. Now, based on this experience at the Bureau, how does it make you feel? Emotionally, I'm devastated forever. The fact that this wasn't addressed when it happened to me has allowed another trail of victims. This is unacceptable. I feel at this point that the, and I sadly, sadly say that the Bureau should establish its own wounded warrior program for the number of employees that have lost sleep, are emotionally scarred, and are, and are in permanent counseling because of this. I'm positive even I still don't know the, the amount of devastation. I know one person I heard from just last night, somebody I had never even met, called me from a field office to tell me 
as a proud immigrant to this country, as a United citizen and having worked at the FDIC for 15 years, his managers referred to him in an open meeting as an effing foreigner. This is unacceptable. He should not be going through this. There are many examples. The person, a similar person that I said that served in the military as well. She's African American, she's strong, she's proud, she's a sole parent. She is fighting now against the Bureau. She wrote to me and she said that she read the report, the Pluto report last night. She said she cried immensely because everything that happened to her exactly happened to me. If they had stopped this when I first told them, she would be fine today. And instead, she's out thousands of dollars fighting her case, trying to seek justice, trying to recover from this. Ms. Martin, thank you for coming forward. We'll now recognize uh, the ranking member of the full committee, Ms. Waters.